Welcome to Iglulik. Welcome to the headquarters of Izuma Iglulik Productions. This is Polar Tangent. I'm Stephen Kovacs from V2, the Institute for the Unstable Media, here together with Malko Pelihan, artist and tactical media operator, with Sasho behind the camera. We'll be talking about a new project up here in the north and the south of the world at Antarctica, together with filmmaker and hunter Zacharias Kunuk. This kind of tactical communication setup would be good. This is much now, but we see what happens. It's very cold. Yeah, it's very cold. <laughs> thinking maybe a, some kind of a mobile unit where also you could produce communicate other hunters out in the land with an interesting concept for a product mm. right now. so it's here and people use use this kind of setup yeah, right now we connect, you know, we have this uh, radio uh, in the FM radio, where we have one channel and everybody talks yeah. on one. Yeah, I was living on Baffin Island and growing up with my brothers and sisters. When uh, the government somehow got the message across to my parents, you guys are receiving family allowance, why aren't you in school? We could cut your family allowance. So this is quite a common story that the government threatened the people who are living out in the land that they will cut their allowance if they don't send their kids away to school, yes? Yeah, exactly. They did this with everybody in the, what, 50s, uh, 60s? Yeah, at that time there was the only income was uh, from skins, fox skins, bear skins. And they come to town, they would talk to him into town. Just and, and what what kind of a town was it when you came here? Um, the, most people were living in matchbox houses, square, square little houses, uh, slanted little houses, uh, like the one we have on the beach. It's uh, Iglerik Federal Day School, um, nursing station, and police, and the Hudson Bay Company, and Roman Catholic Mission, Anglican Mission. And that was about it. And generator, and tanks, and. Mm. and how, how was it for you coming here? Uh, and for you personally? I thought. Uh, Igorik is a big town. I would go with my parents and see the big town and come back out on the land. But uh, I didn't know I was here to stay. They were going back and we were standing on the shore crying. And it took them two years. My parents came to town. Came back. Yeah, in two years. They couldn't without us. And the teachers were uh, uh, English? Yeah. Southerners? All, yeah. All, all Southerners? Yeah. All Southerners. Yeah. It was very difficult for kids in the beginning. Um, yeah. I mean, we're, here, we're there to learn English, so we had to speak English. But you didn't speak any English at that time. Uh, I remember I had my name written on the blackboard like two weeks so I could learn how to write my name. Uh -huh. And your 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 name is what? Your Inuk name. My Inuk I have five Inuk names. Kyutika, Duk Taga, Koichuk, Adagutaru, Nuyaktu. Those are my names they were given to me. And your mom calls you Kyutika. Yeah. Yeah. That's 
That's the first name. That's my father's mother's name. So my father uh, calls me mother. And how did you become Zacharias? Uh, when I got baptized. When I got baptized, I got that name, and then. So the name was given by the priest. Yeah. No, it has to come from the Bible. And so this this was also part of the deal coming into town that you would have to get uh, baptized and and brought into either the Anglican or the Roman Catholic Church? No, there was or something going on with the Catholics and the Anglicans where they were trying to recruit more <laughs> more people on their side and and you can see it because most people in Baffin Island are Anglicans. That's that was the Anglican territory. And Kuwait and up to here it's the Catholic territory. So and the Gulick is sort of on the dividing line. Yeah, we're on the dividing line. Um, most of us who came from Baffin Island are Anglican so when we came into town town the Catholics already had their houses. So we went on the, to the other side. And, and um, you started working with, uh, with, with video and, and the Inuit Broadcasting Corporation at a certain point? Um, at first I was... I like, I like going to the movies and I was doing carving, soapstone carving. And you go to the movies and, ah, it's like God sent. And you don't even uh, think about people behind camera and you just think it just happened and I was when I was young going to school in my teens I was doing still photography I was good at art I was doing still photography and then in 1980 I heard any living person could own a moving, moving picture camera and I needed one the following year I got one. How did you get it? I traded my carvings, flew down to Montreal to an Eskimo art gallery and traded my carvings for my airfare, my hotel, uh, camera, portal pack, TV, VCR. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to ship What it was to your it. first camera? Uh, Sanyo. I still have it in the office. Yeah. Sanyo color video camera. Uh, what what also does Izuma mean? Izuma means to think. Uh, when we started out, of course we needed a name. And, and trying to make a program requires a lot of thinking. So we just named it Izuma. Thinking. Thinking. And what is, it, what is it today? Isuma? Uh, we carried it on. Isuma is now we're being independent from day one and we're after money from our government so much that probably they don't like us but every fiscal year money ends and new fiscal year we go at it again. But um, Inuit are just learning about this. And what do you think about doing this kind of um, broad uh, international project that we're proposing? Um, we've been thinking about this a good number of years and because we're stuck in a community. But it's, it's the only place where it has power and satellite dish and it's the only place we can work. But we've been imagining what if we can work out there in the middle of nowhere, just powered by solar or wind power, and aim the satellite at some satellite and connect to the outside world. Uh, so be in a place where we love to be and still have access to the communication. Yeah, to the communication. So maybe we, this is, sounds like we are looking at the same thing. You're, what you have is 
we've been dreaming all these years. Marco, so maybe, maybe, you can, maybe you can say just dream together <laughs> in maybe, the future. Maybe you can say a bit about what my task is and connection between yeah. the north and the south yes. poles. Well, broad. Because we were thinking, as you know, Steve, w when we m created first Macrolab, one of the places we decided Macrolab should go, and it was more an uh, intuition, not based on any real knowledge, was of course what is now Nunavut. And it was even a map <laughs> of the Macrolab website, and uh, I didn't then know about the Zuma. And so Makarov always had this vision of the north because in the north and in the south poles, in the poles, you actually can observe the changes that are going on on the planet much more radically and much more clearly. You see every change. A change of color in water is probably connected to many processes that are global in scale, for example, or change of a number of caribou roaming the land is connected to the mine and the expansion of this brutalist uh, uh, land grabbing uh, that is going on here in the north. So it's all, it's a big ecosystem as it was somehow imagined even in a, in a poetical sense in the beginning of the century by Klebniko, which was always this kind of inspiration for the project. But then we, two years ago, we started thinking about creating a transnational organization to set up these projects on both poles, in the north with the Inuit nation and in the south as a completely transnational project because there is no native people in the south. Uh, uh, and we created the Interpolar Transnational Art and Science Consortium. And it's an open consortium of organizations. ISUMA is part of the consortium also. And uh, next year, since it's polar year, 2007-2008 is the International Polar Year. It's the first polar year after 57, which was the geophysical year then. And to that year created the satellite that here created the first station in the Antarctic, in the pole. So we think that it's, more, it's the right moment to create this kind of cultural exchange and connectivity around the globe with the south and the north and maybe to bring some Inuks to the south to see what that land looks like, to maybe explore that land in a different way than white people see it. Not maybe, for sure. Yeah. And, uh, 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 and also to create this kind of utility base because of the sort of tactical media aspect of the Makala project and what you said, that you always dreamed that you would have, you could go out in the land and still have the basic connectivity. And this is what somehow Makala was always about. It was about this strategy of we called insulation isolation uh, which is that you are insulated and warm somehow in all senses isolated from this world but totally connected from media to the world so you have access to the world but you can still be out in the land and mm. experience the land and see the land in a very different in what it is not what the government tells you it is for example the macro lab projects up to now have been basically a test for this. Of course. And I, I think that it is, it is very fortunate that this kind of... Because if this need didn't exist or this dream didn't exist in the community here, as you mentioned, then maybe macro lab is not the right idea. But it seems that maybe it is. Mm. And maybe we should really pursue it. Mm. And I think first thing we should attack is this antenna here. Since okay. it's just right there and it's waiting. <laughs> Let, let's, go, <laughs> let's, let's go check out the antenna. Let's go check out the antenna. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. I mean, that's what we've been dreaming. Like, it's not so nice now, but 
once it hits uh, June, everything is beautiful. It's warmer weather, and we well, had this idea that we would um, set up this network where we can broadcast anywhere. People fishing as it is now. People at the flowage as it is now. People traveling, stopping for tea, and they just put on their uh, their communication, and we could see them, and we broadcast this to the outside world as it happens, and that's our long dream. Since there's nothing here, we can just only dream it. I'd say there's more than nothing here. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, Marco, thanks for the chat. No problem. We'll talk more. <laughs>